you know, we're not supposed to be walking by what we see. Uh, and that's, that's also in the scripture. Paul the Apostle says we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's the righteousness that we have through Jesus Christ is a righteousness that's based completely on faith. We cannot go by what we see, by what we hear, by what we feel. And this is when our faith is tested, is when things are in an upheaval. We and now the question. opportunity to really put feet to our faith and to begin to walk by faith and begin to talk according to our faith, not according to what we hear so much. We, we do discuss the news, we discuss what's going on, um, we're aware of the situation and, and as a matter of fact we have to be aware of the situation we're not going to put our head in the sand and just pretend like there's not trouble we need to be aware we need to know what's going on in the world uh, I have to know what's going on for the sake of the business that God has given me and my family and the people that we work with we have to know what the regulations are what the stipulations are we're not trying to do anything that goes against um, what the leaders that God has ordained in this time have put in order. But, and at the same time, we also want to pray so that this doesn't become a time when because of fear, people in power can take advantage of that and use that as a weapon. And, and I'm not saying necessarily that's happening, but we've seen it in the past. There's a tendency that power is corrupted. And we know power corrupts, the power of man, but we have the power and the knowledge of God. Thank God. You know, this has been a reoccurring theme all through the scripture. God would always comfort his people in times like this when there was a temptation to fear, to be afraid, which is the opposite of faith. Because fear is, and worry, are both meditating on those things that you hope won't happen, or thinking consistently on the bad that is happening or the bad that you imagine is happening whatever the case may be faith is trusting in God's word and being unmoved by circumstances trusting in the promises that the Lord said I'll never leave you or forsake you and even if you go down to the lowest parts of the earth if you even enter into death hell even I'll be there with you Thank God that Psalms 116, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee deliver my soul gracious is the Lord and righteous yea our God is merciful the Lord preserveth the simple I was brought low and he helped me return unto the thy rest O my soul for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee that's a promise that's a guarantee those who call on the name of the Lord will never be ashamed Now's the time to cry out to the Lord. It's never, it's never too late. It's never a bad time. I, I believe God can use all these things to our benefit. He proves himself during disasters, during times when there's no other answer, when there's no other solution. And those of us who know the Lord, we're to depend upon him and not the help of man. Not that God can't use uh, humanity and governments and these things to help us but the the source of our provision the source of our health the source of our strength the source of all that we need and have is in Christ and we're not to have any idols before him and this I think is a test for us today I think we're we're to declare and to show that our trust is in the Lord and nothing else. He's our strength. When we feel like we're going to faint, if we look unto the Lord, if we put our trust in Him, it's a guarantee. He'll raise us up. We can always trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died that we might live. He laid down His life that we might have His indestructible life. 
that we could live without even the fear of death, let alone the fear of a, of a plague or a virus or confinement or what, what man, what governments, what people can do to us, that we might know the love of God through the faith of Christ Jesus and the resurrection from the dead, which guarantees that even if we die, yet we'll live all through the scripture. Jesus would always tell the disciples, he would ask them rather, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? That proves your lack of faith if you're, if you're afraid because of the situation, because of what people are doing. Because people are afraid and they want everybody to be as terrified as they are. And we're not to be terrified. We're not to be afraid. We're to trust in God. And who's going to judge another man's servant? Some that have continued to have uh, worship services, they're being condemned for it because of the, the health uh, crisis and, and what could potentially happen as far as the spread of disease because they're continuing to uh, have gatherings and service. You know what? I have to say we have to support them in the Lord. That's very controversial. But if people are praying... If they feel bold in their faith, we ought to support the body. If we don't have faith for it, whoever that might be, then we're not condemned either. When, when Jesus was in the boat with the, the disciples and they were terrified because of the situation, it came very quickly. This situation that's come here in the world has come very quickly. There it was even quicker. They were in a boat. And all of a sudden there was a storm that was so bad, they thought for sure they were going to lose their lives. So they were crying out to Jesus, who was so at peace <laughs> that he was asleep in the boat. And he said to them, this is all, you find this a couple places in the Bible, but this is, I'm reading out of Matthew 8, 26. He said to them, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But his question to the disciples was, why are you so afraid? And I know that's human nature. I have fear rise up in my own heart when I hear certain news and certain things. Fear can begin to take hold. But the Lord, when the love of the Lord begins to work in my heart and my faith takes hold, and that's what we're to do. Build up one another in our most holy faith. I'm not talking about, I don't think the question here is where you become unwise, okay? Where we're doing things that aren't even wise anymore. That, that's not true faith. Faith and wisdom will work together. You're not going to do things that are unwise. Well, some people might say it's not wise. They didn't think it was wise for Paul to continue in his missionary work and to go to Rome. They said, you're going to die. And there was prophets that were telling him, if you continue in what you're doing, you're going to die. And Paul said, I'm willing to die. I'm willing to be arrested. I'm willing to die. And, and Paul was guided by the Holy Spirit. And maybe from a conventional uh, earthly point of wisdom, it looked foolish. But God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So we need to support the body of Christ. And those that have in their heart to do what they feel to do, we need to pray for them. And if it's God that's leading them, let's not condemn what people are doing, lest we condemn what God's doing. Folks, this is a tribulation. This is a time of tribulation. What does that mean? It just means problems. Fear has come upon us because of things out of our control. You know? Sickness, disease, that's not something that we can control. That comes upon us. However it came about, the Lord knows. And maybe that will come to light as well in the days and weeks and months ahead. But irregardless, God is through all and over all. Nothing is out of his control. And we must believe that all things are in his hands. And we must believe that he who comes to God 
must first believe that he is, that he exists. And not only that, but that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that's over in Hebrews. We're to seek the Lord. We're to trust him. And he will keep us. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The love and the faith and the power of the Lord Jesus be with you today. Strengthen you. Keep you. Cause your face to shine. Look unto the Lord. Keep your head up. Don't look down. Don't let the, the, the cares, the worries of this world drag you down. Lift up your head. Continue to see the goodness and the love of the Lord through all of this. And the love and the victory and the peace of the Lord will prevail in the end. It's guaranteed.